Hey there, beautiful teachers, and welcome to this Vibrant Music Teacher Chat. This is your weekly show on YouTube where you can get the latest news and ideas for music teachers just like you and connect with our global community. If you're new here, make sure to say hello in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. And if you've been here a thousand times, no, we haven't done a thousand shows. If you've been here a bunch of times, though, welcome back. There are some names that pop up again and again who are regulars, and I'd love to see you all joining us each and every week. Helps keep the show going. Otherwise, I wouldn't um, be continuing it for this long. We've been going almost two years kind of in this format, which is amazing. So today's topic is about piano books, just generally great books. This is not method books. So we're specifically talking about supplemental books, as we would call them today. Stuff you do outside of the method that isn't like designed to move students along through concepts that are just pieces, even if they are graded. So that's today's topic. But before we get there, we have to do our warm ups and very importantly, we have to choose our snap camera. So <laughs> this is option one for your snap camera today. If you're not familiar with this part of the show, this is for our question session later. So at the end of every show, I do an ask me anything section. And during that section, I put something crazy on my face using this thing called snap camera. So it's just silly, fun, and it makes the question time even more entertaining. And it means the more questions you ask, the longer I stay in whatever form you choose. So we'll choose that now. This is stickers on the face. This is our more, our less crazy option today, to be honest. This is our more subdued option. It's still stickers all over my face. I'm quite happy to look as silly as you like. I've got a sillier option for you. But for, first, can I just show you something? And I'm gonna give you a little warning before this because I'm not giving this as an option because I think it's a bit upsetting. So I'm gonna do it for like two seconds because it is, it is, I mean, I don't know why anyone created this, but I came across it while I was preparing for the show. Lips as eyes. Isn't this creepy? I'm not gonna stay on it for very long. I'm done. Here's option two. <laughs> oh my gosh, can you believe this exists? This, if you teach online lessons, I think this is reason enough to download Snap Camera. I mean, come on, what kid wouldn't love this? This is so fun. Don't do the lips as eyes thing. That was super creepy. But you can be Shrek. Isn't that cool? So you get to choose today, Shrek, you vote in the chat, Shrek or, no, not that one. Like, sorry, I'm gonna get rid of that so I don't see it again. Stickers. <laughs> okay. Uh, Angie votes for Shrek. Let me know which one you wanna do. This is Shrek. This is the stickers. This is quite dainty with the freckles, I have to say. It's quite fun having freckles. I know a lot of people with freckles don't like having them, but I think they're super adorable. And I think Shrek is going to win. Yeah, I thought so. This one's just a bit too dainty, isn't it? It is fun because I do put stickers all over my face quite frequently, so it does match. Uh, but let's go with Shrek. Okay, we'll come back to the Shrek later. Put your questions in the comments and I'll come back to them at the end of the show. Just start with the word question. Okay, we're gonna get into our warm up. Let's take a breath together first. Today, I want you to stretch your arms out wide and breathe in. One, two, three, four. And breathe out and bring your hands to the heart. One two, three, four. Close your eyes for just a second. And we're ready, we're centered. We are going into Rhythm Railroad. I think you're all ready for this, yes? Here we go. So this is our card for today. We're gonna practice it first together. If you're not familiar with these, Rhythm Railroad is a series from inside the Vibrant Music Teaching membership. And we do a couple of these and one of our singing exercises every week just to get ourselves warmed up, to get ourselves musically going, okay? So we're going to practice this first. It's in 4 4. I'll do Kadai rhythm syllables first today. So the orange is touch your shoulders. 
and take a little step back. The oranges touch your shoulders. The light blue is tap one hand on your knee or on a table. I'm just going to do it in the air so you can see what's going on. And then the green is your foot. Stamp your foot. Okay. So let's try it together. It goes ti ti ta ta tu. Ti ti ta ta ta. Ta two three ta. Ti ti ta ta ta. Ti ti ta ti ti ta. Ta 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 two. We know we're in trouble when I nearly mess it up when the backing track is not on, right? <laughs> but we'll give it a go. Okay, so this is your first time doing one of these. There's going to be one bar of count in, four beats, before we start. And then you join in. Try it at home, no matter how silly you feel. Trust me, it's totally worth it. Here we go. I totally messed up the end because I tried to look back at you guys. <laughs> That's where I went wrong. I should have stayed because I need to look over here, right? And then I felt rude for a second, so I looked back at you. That was a silly thing to do. Won't do that next time. Okay, here's number two for today. Let me know how you got on with the first one. <laughs> so this one is in three, four. I'll do counting this time while we practice. Are you ready? Ready, set, go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, and two, and, sorry, I stopped myself there. One, and two, and three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, one, and two, and three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. I had one of those moments there where I just feel like I miss something you know where your brain just sort of blips anyway <laughs> we'll give it a go they are so much fun aren't they lisa they're so so fun i got it and it had the foot oh my gosh lee congratulations <laughs> we do get better right practice makes progress okay here's this one this one will have two bars of count in because it's in three four here we go got it. I didn't look back at you that time. How did you get on? Let me know and we'll do one of our singing exercises. Here is our exercise for today. So this one we get um, the tonic chord and the starting note and then the count in and then we begin. And I'm going to do the hand signs so that I'm not fighting with the backing track by singing over it but I encourage you to try singing at home you can try singing solfa you can try humming you can try making up your own words you can try doing the hand signs with me okay here we go Let me know how you're liking the singing portion of our warm-up. I love to bring this into my lessons. I've loved being able to bring it back into our lessons since we had a long break from singing over here because it was just too risky. So I hope you'll consider doing the same. Uh, this is Salfa Railroad, so it's like Rhythm Railroad, but this one is just singing. And again, you don't have to use the Salfa. So if you want to use these without the Salfa, you totally could do that. Um, I just love sofa as a tool with movable dough so that's why i do it that way into this week's news i want to hear all of your news let me know and i already see some great comments coming in about 
books as well. So let me know your favorite books in the chat when you get a moment. Um, but my news. So I have been preparing to do a YouTube recording session because I'm actually on half term or midterm right now. This, here's a little tidbit. This is the first time I've ever taken this midterm break because some schools don't take the full thing. So we always actually kept teaching it before, but now more and more schools are taking this break. So we've decided to go for it. So it's kind of an additional week off, although it's not really because I took away one of our flex weeks. So it's much of a muchness, but still, I am not usually off at this time of year. So it does feel like a bit of a bonus week to me. And I'm going to be using it to make content. What else do I do? <laughs> and take some time off as well. So I'm doing a YouTube recording session tomorrow. Um, and that is for videos here on the channel. And if you've never recorded videos like that, before you won't know but it is a tiring process so today has just been about taking it really easy to be honest because I know I need to manage my energy so the reason I'm telling you that is not because I think most of you record YouTube videos right I, I know that's not the case however it is sort of just a, a nudge in terms of energy management if you know there's something coming up that's really intense why not purposefully take it easy, skive off a little bit leading up to it if you can, if you don't have things you have to prepare for it, rather than getting to after it, rather than me doing the YouTube session, like working as normal and then doing the YouTube session and being so exhausted tomorrow that Wednesday is useless, that Thursday is useless, I try to take it a little bit easier so it's not as much of a big thing. Um, but yeah, that's just a little nudge if that applies to you right now, if there's something coming up for you. Um, I've also been working on some resources for members. There's two things that I'm playing with and I don't know when these will be ready. These will be like bonus ones. They're not going to be on our regular release schedule. So they'll be released as bonuses at some stage. But your little taster of them here is that I'm working on something called a curriculum checklist which is going to be kind of like our student sleuth, but in a different format that's going to work for teachers who the student sleuth doesn't suit them or that they don't want to use that all the time. And I started testing this with the two teachers who work here and they immediately really appreciated. it. So I think it's going to be really good for slightly uncertain teachers, teachers who are um, towards the start of their teaching journey like the teachers here are because I do training here so that's um where they're at in their journey and then I'm working on something which I'm just going to tell you the title because I think I'm hilarious it's called Parfait Practice and that's all I'm going to tell you about it but it's a little resource that I think could make a big difference in your studio and I think I'm hilarious so <laughs> I don't really I'm just messing <laughs> Um, and then I've also been working on a lot of reels. So those of you who follow me on Instagram, you may have seen some of these. I've been getting back into Instagram reels recently as, you know, experimenting with it, trying some fun stuff over there. So if you don't already follow me over there, we're at Colorful Keys, same name as this YouTube channel. So just search for us on Instagram and hopefully you enjoy my little reels. I just posted a new one today, which is all about flamingos which was kind of in honor of this dress because I was like, oh, well, the dress is finished. Why don't I make a flamingo reel? So that was part of my skiving off today was just messing around with <laughs> flamingos and yoga. Actually, Chloe, you might like it or you might hate it because it's me poorly doing yoga poses. But anyway, <laughs> I think it's funny. Um, and then we had some great releases for you if you're looking for more broad repertoire. So I'm sure you are because you're here on this chat, which is about books in general. But the post we just published on the blog is about books that will help you to take your students around the world to introduce them to music from different places. And so there's some wonderful suggestions there. Most of them were new to me, so they might be new to you too. And then... Uh, Last two things I wanted to mention. Oh, three things, sorry. <laughs> Number one is 
our podcast teaching studio stories. I haven't mentioned it in a little while. So that is on episode nine will be coming out tomorrow. It's almost finished season one. So if you're someone who likes to save up podcasts so that you can binge them all in a row and like not have to touch the player while you clean your oven or something. Is that just me? I doubt it. So if you're someone like that, the almost the whole of season one is up. Eight episodes, nine tomorrow, and then there's one next week, and then there'll be a break. So that's a wonderful show to listen to if you need a um, different perspective on your own teaching, a bit of a bolster that you're doing it right, and that you're just like everyone else, and some just some inspiration from teachers from around the world. I loved doing those interviews, so I hope you loved listening to them too. If you have listened and you haven't l- yet left us a review, I would really appreciate you doing that. Just wherever you listen to the podcast, leave a review there. Let people know why you enjoyed listening to it. I would really appreciate it. It's a new show, so it needs some love. And then two things outside of my sphere, which is the first one is uh, from Christina Whitlock and Jana Williamson. So they did this chat on Instagram Live. So if you look up on Instagram, look up Beyond Measure podcast, which is Christina's podcast. Her and Jana did this chat. Let me know if you saw it. I watched it back on Saturday, I think. And I just loved it. It was so fun to listen to. I mean, they're both great to listen to all the time. Christina is is especially giggly, so she, she appeals to me. But she, she giggles even more than me. So if my giggling is good for you, then you will love her. Her, her laughter is way more fun. Even more fun, I should say. And she cracks Jana up as well, which is great. And they're talking about pieces from Masterwork Classics, which is one of my favorite series. And it, it's just such a fun chat to listen to. I really highly recommend it. Like, I honestly intended to just open it and see what they were up to. Like, I was gonna, I thought I'd shut it off after a minute. I just was curious, like, what, oh, what were they talking about? And I couldn't stop. I just listened to the whole thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> if it captured my attention, it might for you too. And then lastly, there was a really uh, interesting video on top music here on YouTube. Tim Topham had a lesson with Fred Karpov. Both of them are going to be speaking at the Teacher Turbo Boost, uh, which is our conference coming up soon. And Fred did a lesson teaching Tim. So Tim is a student, Fred is the teacher in this scenario, and they did an online lesson just live. And you can watch it back and see the actual lesson. And I just think that's so fun and a different way of looking at technique in particular, because Fred is so good with technique. So lots to look at this week, but we have lots to look at as well. So let's get to our books for today. This week, we're talking about 12 different books that I love. These are not my 12 favorite books of all time. I would find that impossible. I am one of those people who, if you say, hey, what's your favorite film? I'll just go, I don't know, and panic. So I don't like saying my favorite things, like my top things. They're just some of my favorites, okay? So I've chosen 12 to try and give us lots of diversity. These are all supplemental books, so they are not books that are designed to be used as like a curriculum or as a method book. Uh, They're not structured in that way. They're more repertoire books. And they're going to go loosely in order of easiest to most difficult. But I say loosely because I just did it roughly in order. It's not very exact. Of course, it all all depends. When you're looking at leveling like that, it all depends what your student is learning. Like if they are doing a certain method book series, they'll learn things in different orders than another method book series. And so leveling is always a movable feast, right? But this is the first one I'm going to start with. This is volume two of 70 Keyboard Adventures for the Little Monster. So it starts with number 35. This book is so much fun. Let me know if you know this one. (laughs) It is, um, yeah, I'll show you the bottom part because it says edition 
Sprite Cup. Yeah, so that's what you look up. 70 keyboard adventures with a little monster anyway. And this is volume two. I have used volume one. I think volume two is even more fun, but definitely check out both of them. So this, all of these pieces are so interesting. They all use, well, a lot of them use like different techniques, experimental things. For instance, the very first one, the X's, that's explained below. It says tap on the piano lid, okay? So there's like often different instructions like that. Um, lots of different articulation, dynamics to explore, things like that. Um, what was one of the really interesting ones? They're all so fun, honestly. Like the, oh yeah, so this is a good example of where they do like a drawing keep getting louder and faster, right? So they really play on the patterns, which I love, and then translate them into like graphical drawings and things, and students instantly get what they mean. These are just great to use as a supplement for any student. You could either use them because a student is in a particular method and they need to speed it up. Like it's, it's they need different challenges and I've definitely used it that way. But also for a student who's further ahead, you could use it to slow things down. Like they just need extra repertoire at that level-ish. So you could definitely use it to slow things down. And you could do the pieces partially by rote if you wanted to. Although they're definitely very readable for the right type of student. Um, so that is 70 Keyboard Adventures with the Little Monster, Volume 2. My second book... Let me know if you have any questions about these as I go through. My second book is Magic Beans by Ben Crosland. This is in a similar category for me in that I would use it alongside a method book, generally for a student who either needs more challenge or needs more reinforcement. So if a student needs more challenge, say at the start of level two of Piano Safari, for example, this would be a great fit. But if they're coming towards the end of level two of Piano Safari, the, and I feel like level two, it, level three is going to be too tough and I need to slow them down, reinforce things around that level at the end of that book, before we move forward, then this, um, this can be a great one for that. So this is a mixture of rote and reading. And one of the things I love about this, especially if you have, if you are not, you know, used to teaching these types of slightly quirkier pieces is that he includes really great teaching notes at the end. And he says there whether it's intended to be rote or reading. Of course, he's not imposing anything on you. If you want to teach it a different way, if you want to have them read everything for some reason, like they're much further ahead than this, then absolutely you could do it that way. But I do like that that's there. There's also some great little duets in this book and a lot of, um, not as experimental as 70 Keyboard Adventures, but still like interesting bits and pieces, things you wouldn't normally find in repertoire at this level, um, for sure. And just really beautiful pieces. I mean, they're gorgeous. So that is Magic Beans by Ben Crosland. And Kelly suggested also Easy Beans. I haven't gotten that one. I haven't had a reason to purchase it. I do like to hold myself back a little bit, but yeah, I'm sure it's fantastic. It's also by Ben Crosland, obviously. Next one is by June Armstrong, who has been on the show here, and it's called Safari. So if I have one complaint about this book, it's that I have students who use this who are also in Piano Safari. And so I'll say, take out Safari, and I have to clarify that I mean the one that's just Safari and not Piano Safari, but that is my only complaint. <laughs> and it's not a real one. This is just a gorgeous book. I love this. So I often teach these pieces by rote, or some by rote and some by reading, depending on the student. But what it does is it goes through a whole day on Safari. So it starts with a piece called African Dawn, and then... I'm just going to show you the TOC there. It starts with African Dawn and then goes through all these different animals. And then by the end, you get to twilight and then night sky with stars, right? So it's going through this full day. Now, you don't have to do the pieces in order, but I actually, a few years ago now, we did this book 
um, with loads of different students, taught them one or two pieces by road each, and did the whole thing as if it was one big movement, you know, one big shared movement between all of them. And it was just gorgeous. And I thought it made, you know, the beginner students really shine because they got to play these gorgeous expressive pieces and all students love them because they really do sound like, you know, the zebras or the gazelles or the stampede or hyenas, you know, stuff like that. So those are really fun. That is Safari and it is by June Armstrong. Number four. Again, ask your questions if you have them and put your suggestions in the comments too. This one is a duet book. I had to throw in one duet book. So this is content, Contest Winners for Two. This is an evenly leveled duet book, meaning it could be for two students. However, you can always play one of the parts if you don't have a situation where you can have two students together like I do in buddy lessons. I have several different duet books that I love. I decided to include this one because it's the best all-rounder. If you want pieces that sound really great, I mean, in a recital, because like it says, it's contest winners for two, right? They're meant to be a bit flashy or a bit showy-offy, which is great. And students love them. They can be a little bit challenging in some cases because like this book, for example, is number one. It's not actually hard, but students can be thrown off by the flats in a lot of the pieces. There's a black key suite in here, but it's not actually hard to play. So it's a great lesson for them almost in, no, you just look at the patterns and it's just as easy as any of your other pieces. So love to include this one and all the subsequent levels of those. Next, I think this was mentioned in the chat earlier. This is by Brock Chart. Sorry, covering his name. Brock Chart. I have reviewed his Five Finger Jazz previously on the channel, and I do have a video coming up in a couple of months, I think, about this one. So if you want to hear some samples from it and stuff like that, um, that's there, but you can look it up right now, of course. Don't wait for that. So this is by Brock Chart, My Melodies is his site and his publishing name and why do I love this one I love these because well number one Brock's thing that he's really passionate about is that the backing tracks be fantastic and they are they're great they're the best backing tracks of probably any book that I've used so if that appeals to you that's a great element of this book and I love using backing tracks in general and they're very accessible pieces, some challenging rhythms, but you have the backing tracks and you have the version with the piano. So students can get it in their ear and it's not such a problem then. And as it's, the name would suggest, five finger pop. So it's a sort of staying in position-ish things, but it's not heavily position based. And it's just really fun, just great pieces. Some of these got stuck in my head for days when I was doing that review video which is coming out soon so highly recommend checking this out it's relatively new I think he published it last year and there's a level two as well if you want something a little bit harder this one it says late beginner to early intermediate I would be looking at uh, someone I'll give Piano Safari as a reference generally today just to keep it consistent but someone heading out of level two into level three of Piano Safari could definitely handle this a little bit earlier on if they were very motivated to do it. Now, a little bit on the harder side. That's great to hear, Karen. Yeah, I love them too. A little bit on the harder side, we have this guy, Big Time Pop. So many of you will be familiar with, um, oh, sorry, Hits, not Pop. Many of you will be familiar with Faber's Pre-Time to Big Time series. I am a fan of those books in general. I love them after chord time <laughs> chord time onwards great i think the pre-time level it doesn't really do what it sets out to do that's just my opinion like i love i love the idea of making something like disney songs or famous melodies accessible to students who are still at a primer level but i think inevitably it doesn't sound good enough it's not convincing enough so 
And playtime, yeah, but only with the teacher duets. And then once you get to chord time and above, I think they, they really do a great job of arranging those. Um, so this is their hits editions, which include recent-ish songs. If you're going to go for this, um, just be careful that your student really does want know and want to play these songs. If your student asks you to play pop, that they want to play pop music, first ask them what they specifically want to play because if they have something specific in mind this is not going to do anything for them however if you especially have adult students who or later teens who really want to play familiar music but they don't have any particular inklings they can't give you any suggestions these can be a good place to go at this level so i do like the fun time level and then this is the big time level which is the last one it's a level five in the Faber series. It has All of Me, Firework, Hello, See You Again, Shake It Off, Shut Up and Dance, Sorry, Stay With Me, Sugar, Symphony, What About Us, When I Was Your Man. All of those are like not that recent, right? If <laughs> you're not familiar with them. Like even All of Me, certainly Firework, that's been out for a long while, right? And Hello, like that's not recent from Adele. Um, but they are songs that generally st stood up for a bit of a test of time. <laughs> we'll see how they do on the long test of time. But great option if you want something familiar and your student doesn't know like oldies, right? Now to jump up in level a little bit as I throw books on the floor. Um, <laughs> we have Amadeus Anthems. Who's a fan of these? These are by Andrea Dow. And she has... Lots of different ones like this. So all the covers look like that. It's easy to recognize them. Um, they're different sessions. What she does is take a theme or a melody from a famous work and then rearrange it into a pop style. And she does a fantastic job of it. They are gorgeous. They are not easy though. So you do need students to be pretty competent players to, to do this. <laughs> It's definitely a level three if we're talking about piano safari. Um, that's when students could start to try and attempt these, maybe mid-level three. But again, only if they're passionate and really they'd want to have graduated from that method entirely to play these comfortably and quite master them quickly. Just because of the patterns in the left hand and the combinations between them. Some are easier than others, don't get me wrong, but like... They'd want to be pretty comfortable with patterns like these to play them at the speed they're going to want to play them at. So I would just caution you on that. Like we do want a pretty solid early intermediate to intermediate level here. But yeah, the Amadeus anthems. I think if you probably look up classical pop piano solos or just look up Andrea Dare's name. Where is her name in it? She doesn't put it on the cover. Anyway, they're teach, teach Piano Today, which many of you will know. Yeah, really a hit with tweens and teens for sure, who are strong enough for that level. But just, yeah, there's no easier version, which I do think is a shame sometimes. But however, um, they're gorgeous books. Next up, I've gone in a different direction. Masterwork Classics, which I mentioned earlier because it was Christina and Jana had based their little video on some of the Masterwork Classics levels. I picked out level four today. Not for any particular reason. This is more of a stand-in for the whole series. I do love the whole series. However, level four is where it gets really good, I think. <laughs> but I wouldn't pick and choose. All of the levels are great and it's just a wonderful standard classical um, repertoire book. It's by far my favorite though, um, by a long way. And I know people love like, uh, what are the other ones? Journey Through the Classics or what's the Keith Snell one? I don't know, but Jane McGrath all the way for me. So Masterwork Classics, love that collection. Just love it for bringing it to students. And there is a CD, which, um, you know, you can play for students or you can, they can look up the pieces, of course, on YouTube or anywhere like that. So make sure to do that so that they are sold on them because they're great pieces. They're just such a solid collection. Okay. 
Next up, we've got four left. <laughs> Next up we have Whimsy and Wonder. So we're getting a little bit more challenging. Now this is around the same, really, as a level four of Masterwork Classics. So I did put them together. I recently did a reel on Instagram with this in the background at Stacy's request. <laughs> because I did one video with my octopus socks, which I happen to be wearing to get today again, but I'm not gonna lift my foot up and show you. But anyway, I did a reel, which was about different time signatures and teaching them with dance. And I wore my octopus socks because I think they're fun. And Stacy requested, oh my gosh, can you do one where you dance to this? Because how perfect, right? <laughs> so I did that. I did some silly waltzing to her beautiful piece, but I love all the pieces in this book. I actually once played one of these for a recital myself, for like a student recital. It's on the easier side, maybe for teacher repertoire, but I don't care about that. I just wanted to play something that people will love. And she has a really fun arrangement of Molly Malone in here. Um, I can't remember if she calls it something different or it's been a few years since I played it. It is in here, isn't it? No, maybe it's in a different book. Sorry. That was in her other book. But anyway, all gorgeous pieces. Love Stacy's work. She was also here on the show, so if you want to hear from her. And that is Stacy Ferrian. Whimsically Macabre. Which I love. Yes, Jennifer, that's the word I was looking for. Thank you very much. I almost said essential, but then I wasn't sure. So that's Keith Snell that I mentioned. I prefer Masterwork Classics. I know some people love the Essential Piano Repertoire, so each to their own. So highly recommend you check out Stacy. Yes! Right? Kelly, it's so fun. I'm always trying to convince students to love that. My only issue with it is some teenagers will like, even though the the folks, not folk song, kid songs are like rearranged and made super cool, They'll just see the kid song part and they won't give it a go. And I'm like, no, it's so fun. I need to do a better job of selling it. That's on me. Okay, three left. This, I don't know if you will have heard of. Anyone know this volume? This is Simply Porter. It's arranged by Dan Coates. Many of you will know Dan Coates. I particularly love this book. Now, what I hate about it is this. Does anyone else just want that... Um, particular label to die. I just <laughs> I just want it to go away. Can we stop putting easy piano on things? It's a terrible label and it usually means intermediate. So what is it? Where did it come from? How can we squash it? <laughs> Sorry, that's my rant for today. But I love this book. I just <laughs> I just wish that wasn't there, because this is not easy, okay? I'm not saying it's really advanced, but this is solid intermediate stuff. And, I mean, calling it easy piano, I just think is so mean. Look at that. Easy piano. Come on. Publishers, stop it. Anyway, I have a student using this at the moment. I hadn't used it for several years, and she was interested in, like, jazz standards and she was bringing up some like older names not cold porter specifically but around that era and so i said we just show this to her and like play her a few pieces and see if this is what she's after and it totally was so i was right on the money sometimes you have to interpret what students are saying to you and figure out what they're really after so she's done night and day so far and she's just started on um anything goes right so she's loving it I love this book. It's so fun. Yeah, right. Exactly. It's like a grade four to five. Yes. Intermediate is what Americans would call it. I mean, it's just easy, especially for adult students. Teens, I can just tell them like that's nonsense and they'll believe me or younger students for sure will believe me. But adults, they're like, they think you're then kind of pandering to them or like, trying to make it sa soften the blow somehow. And I'm like, no, easy piano is really not a thing. But you can't emphasize it enough because then you sound like you're overdoing it. I don't know. 
No more easy piano. Yeah. Can we start a petition? Should we like start an online petition about this and send it to all the major publishers? Okay. Two left. This one is called Quiet Classics. Does anyone know this? This is by edited by Keith Snell. I love this collection. And I think it is a great one for, again, teens and adults who are more on the recreational side, but have gotten to a good standard. So ones that are not about doing like sonatas or they're, they're, they don't want to do Bach conventions, you know, they don't want to drive forward and forward and forward, but they want great music that they love. And they are open to classical, but they want it to be the stuff that they imagine <laughs> when they imagine themselves playing piano or someone great playing piano, right? Which they're not picturing something we would think of as recital repertoire or competition repertoire. They're picturing pieces like this. So yeah, it has for release, but it also has, you know, Movement 2 from the Path of Teague, Claire de Lune, um, some gorgeous pieces they might not have heard of, but also Moonlight and Songs Without Words. I think it has a couple, I'm not sure. Um, Prelude in E minor. And it's unique in the way it's set up. So it's set up into sets, which means each group kind of acts as this gorgeous set together. So it's, you could use it for gigs and things. Um, appropriate for wed church services, weddings, elegant parties, restaurants is what he says. But it's also just great for students who want to play lovely pieces. And they're open to classical, romantic, etc. But they can't articulate what they want and they don't want the stuff that they will never hear. Or, yeah. So, that's Quiet Classics. Love that one. And... Last one, number 12. I was about to say no, lucky number 13. What's wrong with me? Number 12, Best Piano Solos by Philip Kevern. So this is another one where there's the Philip Kevern series, okay? Um, So there are two, there might be more than two, but there are definitely two that I use from this, two levels. There's Piano Solo, which is this one, and then there's Easy Piano. And piano solo, while I don't object to that in the same way as easy piano, I mean, they're all piano solos, so why is that what it's called? But whatever. That's fine. I really like the piano solo level. I'm not as gone on the easy piano level. However, if, if students really want to play those particular pieces, like whichever collection, whichever theme you choose, it is a good option. The thing I don't love about them is... The arrangements are good, but I wish he condensed them because they're too long for students at that level. That's just my little bugbear with that. But at the piano solo level, which is like an intermediate, late intermediate level, we're talking about grades five to six to maybe seven sometimes. This is gorgeous. And I picked out best piano solos for you today just because it's a great mixed collection. But if your student is really into the Beatles or Elton John or jazz standards or whatever, there's there's one for pretty much everything. Um, these are just gorgeous. They're such lovely arrangements. Has anyone played these? When I'm sitting down on a Sunday with a Sunday evening, glass of wine, want to play a few, sight read through a few pieces just for fun. I love to pick up these really fun to play really playable gorgeous pieces and that is all 12 books let me know if you have any questions about them or any questions in general just type the word question first right now though i'm going to quickly talk about our book for our book club so for our book club this week we had a new chapter of our book which is teaching piano to students with special needs I'd love to hear your thoughts in the chat or if you're a member in the members area after the show. Um, I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was great. Uh, I, the episode, chapter. I really enjoyed this chapter. I thought it was great. I love the review at the start of it. it was actually about the previous chapter, but it was a great bullet pointed list and just a great list to refer back to again and again. And then she talked about creating a positive lesson environment. So... Um, simple things like always giving a positive before any correction or anything like that and always framing things from a positive. So instead of saying, don't do this, do that. And that's sort of general teaching advice. However, she is right, I think, that 
it's it's extra important for students who have learning difficulties, special needs, disabilities. At least I have certainly found that in my studio as well, because I think well, I think it's because it might it sometimes can because be because of the actual um disability or or difference in their brain or whatever. But I think it often is simply because in school everything is hard and they're always wrong. And it makes them really sensitive, I find, to corrections. So we do have to tread more carefully, be more careful to be positive and to set things up in a way where they are going to get the right answer. I think that's really important. Yes, I love that quote as well, Angie, for sure. The goal of each lesson is not to perfect a piece, but to help each student do their best. That's true for everyone. And that's the thing she keeps coming back to and I keep coming back to again and again is a lot of this is just about good, good teaching. And if you become a great teacher for students with special needs, with learning difficulties, with disabilities, you will be an even better teacher for everyone else than you already were. So I think it's all great advice all around. Um, Yeah, and I just love this careful consideration of what the lesson feels like for the student. She did have a short section about parental involvement and I do think some of that was uh, can be aspirational, (laughs) let me say it like that, because she's right it is more important than ever that the parents are involved, they do know things about their child and they can give you suggestions that are super useful because they work with them every day. However, I have found that my students with various diagnoses, they, their parents have to help them with so much schoolwork outside of school that they are pretty close to their edge. And they want them to be in piano and they want this for them, but it is really hard for them to find the time to practice together, to come into the lessons and, and talk to you about it. And that is part of the reality. So I think we need to work with where the parents are as well as where the students are sometimes. But uh, great suggestions. I'm really enjoying this book. I highly suggest you read along with us. It is called Teaching Piano to Students with Special Needs and it's by Mary Ann Froelich. So you can look it up on Kindle and Kobo and all the ebook stores. I don't think it's available in print. That's our book. We're reading the next chapter next week. Just one chapter per week. So um, read along with us. Catch up to where we are. We're only like 60 pages in. It's not a long book, so you could definitely catch up. And I have left my written thoughts in the forums for members that are watching, so you can read my thoughts there in more detail as well. All right, hello! (laughs) Here's my Shrek head. Oh my gosh, I love wearing this. This is so fun. (laughs) Thank you for choosing this one, everyone. (laughs) It's so fun. The only thing is sometimes, yeah, sometimes when I close both eyes, it kind of closes one first. I'll stop doing that, sorry. <laughs> I just find it funny. Um, Lee, it's just the next chapter. So what we were on chapter four, so it's chapter five. It's just one chapter per week on the book. And again, the full schedule and all my comments are in the forums. Yes, Emmy, I love Forrest Kinney's work. Please look it up. I nearly included one today. I actually miscounted my books at first. (laughs) So I I was like finding more because I thought I had only nine and then I found more and then I realized I was up to 16 in total. So I'm not good at counting apparently, but um, yeah, I had to cut some out. So I was going to bring Forrest Kinney's puzzle play as well. And then I thought, no, we'll stick to repertoire, repertoire. That's how I'll cut this down. So but I highly suggest taking his books. I absolutely love them. I talk about them all the time. Um, no, uh, the tracking charts. No, it's one file per student. There would be no good way to combine them unless you want to create your own Google Sheet. But it's a, it's a PDF, so it really wouldn't work to have all the students there. But it's much easier to organize it that way, in my view. At least I find it easy to organize. So if there's something confusing you about it, Lee, please do post in the forums. And I'd be happy to troubleshoot with you, help you come up with different ways to use it. (laughs) 
Angie. I love that so much. It doesn't have a rocket setting. I won't be developing one because I don't want to encourage students to try and go that fast. But you could definitely set like a, a drumming track up if he wants to try it at like 300 BPM or something just for fun. How many challenges from your board is any student working on at any time? Good question, Jennifer. Um, probably two to five, I'd say is about the range. So most students would be working on a minterval and 60 second challenge unless they like just started pretty much or unless they passed off both. But you know, it takes quite a few years to really get to gold level of say 60 second challenge. So most have both of those. And then a lot would also have a scale challenge. Some would also have a chord challenge depending on where they're up to. And right now everyone has the 30 practice bullseyes challenge as well. So two to five. No, Tess, Tessa, sorry. Um, this is just a chat, so this is a very informal show. Uh, there's no list, but you can go back and watch the replay as many times as you like. Okay, I think that's all my questions. Let me just check in with the general chat. Um, Chloe, you're welcome. Glad you enjoyed it. Oh yeah, Forest Guinea's happy birthday variations. Yeah, and the happy birthday's in the puzzle play, which is great. So students create their own arrangements. I love that. Angie, thank you. <laughs> I might have been slightly off there. Did I say chapter four? I meant to say chapter five. Sorry. Sorry, Lee. Thank you, Angie. <laughs> okay. Awesome, everyone. Oh, Shelly. Yes. Uh... Let me get you the link to that. Um, well, I don't know if you remember or not, Shelley, so I'm going to get you two links before we wrap up here. Here is the member link. And then, yes, there is the blog link, which is sort of the the backstory around it and that kind of thing. So hopefully that helps, Shelley. Open those up right now because the chat does disappear. YouTube's a bit funny about that. Thank you all for hanging out with me and letting me be both Shrek and Flamingos on the same day. <laughs> that was super fun for me. And I hope it was fun for you too. And I hope you enjoyed the suggestions of books today. Keep adding your thoughts in the comments. And I will see you back here next week for another Vibrant Music Teaching Chat. See you there.